those of you who haven't heard and don't know, um, it's with a uh, sad heart that I tell you that Reverend Marty's mother made her transition on Wednesday night. And the church is going to do something, but we don't know what yet until we talk to Reverend March. And she should be back this coming week. So, thank you. We praise God 
and give thanks for the most benefit, the most beneficial outcome possible to all the things that are going on in this world. That all are guided, that our government is guided, that all leaders, organizational leaders all over the United States are guided and uplifted and supported. <coughs> we praise God for all of us coming together <coughs> in love and understanding, in cooperation, in unity. And so it is. Thank you, God. And now we take our affirmation. Together, God has divine order is moving in and through our whole world today. Peace, love, and joy abound. We'll do our vision statement. A world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awareness. Our mission. In loving community, we nurture and inspire spiritual growth by modeling and teaching universal spiritual principles. And our values, welcoming, diverse, prayerful, transformational, abundant, joyful, and empowering. Statement of being. God is all, both invisible and physical, one presence, one mind, one power.
morning. morning. Welcome to Unity Spiritual Center. My name is George Neal, and it is my pleasure to serve as your platform assistant today. Thank you for joining us today. Unity Spiritual Center is our spiritual home where we know, love, and serve God through our prayer and meditation, our Sunday celebration, our classes, and community. And we appreciate the uh, talents of our music team today, our choir. Now please join us in singing our joy song, words will appear on the screen. Jim Hall will give us a board update. 
I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, that's what says Jim Hall here. I didn't make that up. Pretty <laughs> dull. And then the prayer chaplain will read the daily word and the spiritual power of the month and will bless the prayer box. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am Reese Dolan. I'm not Jim Hall. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm actually wearing two hats this morning. You know me most recently as the hospitality team leader, and I've done that now for over a year. I realized that back in September when we actually had an anniversary moving into this new building. It's hard to believe it's been that long. So I want to recognize the team members for hospitality because many of them have been serving for a year. So anyone that served on the hospitality team, please stand up. Come on, I know you're all out there. <laughs> I have a trivia question for you. How many people do you think we have on that team to run our community service after the church here, after our church service? How many people? Somebody throw out a number. Hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Ten. How about twenty-two? Okay. Twenty-two. So that gives you an idea of how much goes on back in that kitchen. Now the good news is we try to ask everybody to serve just once per month, one Sunday per month. So we're always looking for new people for volunteers, but that organization, that team does a great job. And we just had a wonderful team meeting. So thank you all. And I also want to thank all of you who bring food on a regular basis. That does make our um, community service a lot more fun and, of course, more enjoyable. And we'll talk about that a bit more later. So I want to let you know that I spoke to you a couple months ago about some manifestations and synchronicities. And I want to follow up on that. I, I visited Raleigh, which is my hometown, back in September for about two weeks. And I was working for an attorney remotely. However, when I went there, I worked in her office, and we both realized she needed a whole lot more help than I could give her on the computer. So we mutually agreed that, we, that I would move on and she'd find somebody locally, which was really good because I didn't feel like it was the best fit. So next, Reverend Marsh came to me a week after I came back. And talk about synchronicity and what was Laura Lee saying, opportunities got to come to us and you know, we have to take advantage of them, and I think that's a really good thing. So Reverend Marge said, how would you like to be the volunteer coordinator? I said, well, let me give that some thought, because <laughs> it is a big responsibility. And I did some praying about it. I did some thinking about it. And I realized that this new position would offer me an opportunity to use a lot of my skills that I developed in the business world. I had organizational skills and communication skills. So this job really fits that team. So I got this guide from Marge, it's called the Sacred Service Ministry Guide. And I'd never read it before and I had no idea what it meant. So I realized and read that my new position is Sacred Service Ministry Coordinator. I also learned that Sacred Service Ministry is more than just a volunteer program. It's about, here, here are the word for word from that manual, assisting spiritual community members and finding fulfilling ministry as part of their own spiritual journey. I know that this new role will provide me a wonderful opportunity to further my own spiritual path. And I know a number of you are participating in teams. Let's see a, a show of hands for those that are on a team right now. Some team within the church. Thank you all. So, those of you who are already participating, you are following your own spiritual journey. But I want to encourage others to join us in this journey by volunteering your time, talent, and treasures, not just your money. We really need your help. So please consider signing up as a volunteer. We'll help fit you to the right committee and the right job that you might like. And we'll be assisting you in learning how to do that and what to do. So you're not going to be just thrown into something that you don't know anything about. I'm going to pass sign-up sheets around. I know you get tired of that, but <laughs> we're going to do it one more time this morning. And I want to thank you all for considering stepping up on your spiritual journey and helping us here to forward our mission here at the church. 
and thank you all very much. will be in the sanctuary after the service. If you prefer more privacy, we have prayer rooms on either side of the sanctuary. We're honored to be of service to you. Thank you to all the chaplains. From the Daily Word, published by Unity, if you don't already have a copy of this, you can get one at our bookstore inside the community center. Today's word is joy-filled spirit, and it comes from Psalms 51-8. Let me hear joy and gladness. These words to a popular unity hymn perfectly express the deep and boundless joy in my soul. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. Divine happiness is my birthright, and I express that radiant happiness in many ways through a warm smile I share with others, through my uplifting words, and through the helpful actions I take on behalf of others. Like a cork that floats to the surface, my soul is naturally inclined to rise up in a state of joy. I don't let negativity hold me down. Instead, I am buoyed up by my relationship with God. My connection to spirit helps me live from a joy-filled awareness. I am energized and uplifted. The joy I feel in my soul is an expression of the radiant life of God that courses throughout my being. Please join me in the affirmation. I am joy-filled and radiant. The spiritual power of the month of October is order. Ordered. The corresponding color is olive green, as in this banner. The center of order is located at the navel. Order is the ability to organize, balance, sequence, and adjust. Order is represented by Mary of Athias and the disciple James, son of Athias. Please join me in saying the affirmation. I declare divine order in my thoughts, words, and actions create a life of significance. Now Reverend will come up. <clears throat> Divine Spirit, we know we are one with you. Please join us now as we join our hearts and minds with the people that are in the box and also those that put the names in the box, knowing that you will show all of us how we are one and we are perfect where we are. For this, we give thanks, and so it is. Amen.
word in terms with whom we can share. And it's good to know that there is a higher power with whom we can share and ask all these questions. And I hope you enjoy this song. Lord, what would you have me do today? Thank you. 
we have a new clicker today. <laughs> and I'm the one that gets to try it out. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you just want to sing into it? Could we just call everybody up and, and have them come down and have a picnic or something in front of this beautiful waterfall? Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just get the whole world in front of the waterfall? You know, when I see the water coming down like that, I just automatically go, oh. <laughs> even though it's just a photograph, it still brings me home and helps me plug in and feel that peace. <laughs> Nothing is more important, I don't think, right now today than feeling that peace within ourselves as individuals and knowing that that is our role. So many people are wandering around going, oh, everything's upside down, what can I do? Who am I to do anything about this? And you know what? <laughs> Just being you is what you can do. Isn't that right? You being peaceful, you Taking the high road is what it's all about. It's what, that's really why we came, don't you think? That's the truth. We have to believe in ourselves, in our inner power, to be a healing influence in our world. But you know, before I get too serious, I, I know that Marge likes to do jokes for you. <laughs> And, and that is so wonderful. Um, and unfortunately, as it happens, I couldn't find any of my Halloween jokes in my computer. So you'll just have to forgive me about that. But you know what? Um, speaking of having fun and, and all of that, did you hear about that guy, you know, the guy that wrote uh, the, uh, what is it, the, no, I can't think of it. <laughs> the Pokey, what is it called? Pokey. Pokey Pokey. Did you hear that he passed? Yeah. yeah. You know, they had a hard time with him, though, uh, getting him ready for the funeral. He, he, he put a, you put the left leg in, and then you put the right <laughs> leg in, and then you heard all about <laughs> It's all about uh, involving yourself in several practices that have to do how you handle things within, that give you uh, an opportunity to go deeper into self-acceptance. And so it's a, it's a wonderful study. It's a transformational book. It's all about transformation. And you know, I think that's what unity is about, isn't it? Have you changed since you came to Unity? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I grew up in Unity. And I started seeing people make big differences in their life when I was just a little kid. And one person I remember that was so powerful and so wonderful was my YOU sponsor. I was a YOUer, if you can imagine that. And um, her name was Betty, Betty Brown. And Betty was just this ball of energy and fire and enthusiasm. She was wonderful. She was also a little pushy and um, a little controlling and actually a little difficult sometimes. And so, you know, one day her husband came home and he said, well, this is it, Betty. I'm leaving you, and I found someone I want to marry. 
Oh, I mean, Betty was married to him already, but he, you know, he wanted a new spouse. And so Betty was crushed. She was devastated. But she was a good Unity student, and so she decided to go off to Unity Village. Have you ever done that? And she was there at least a month. I'm not sure how long, but I know it's a long time. And she came home, and she told Louie, her, her husband, she said, Louie, I understand. I'll give you the divorce, and by the way, you can also take the three children. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it sounds a little bit like maybe that made Louie chicken out because he did decide not to divorce Betty. But it wasn't because of the children. It was about Betty. Because Betty was different. You know, Betty, when she, before she went to Unity Village, had glasses. But she really had glasses. And I don't know that we have those glasses around anymore, but they were the real thick kinds and sort of make you look like Barney Google. When Betty came back from Unity Village, she didn't wear glasses. Can you imagine? That's how much her perception had changed. Her viewpoint and her understanding of herself and her acceptance of herself was totally different. And they had a very happy life together, Betty and Louie. Betty is sort of an example in my consciousness of real transformation, of really being willing to relinquish old ways, habits that don't work, attitudes that are not helpful. You know, I'm still working on all that. Do you, I don't know, maybe you might have one or two or something there. You know, you get to be a certain age and you think, well, I've done enough of this. I've been cleaning myself up forever, <laughs> clearing consciousness, saying affirmations, meditating. I've just about done it. And maybe you have. You know, um, that's, I salute you then. Most of us still discover that there are things that come up in life where we react. We react instead of responding. And what I mean by that is, you know, we don't even think about what we're saying, but we just out, and there it is. And we wonder, well, why did I say that? Have you ever done that? Well, I didn't mean to get so irritated. And by the way, I don't want to be irritated. You know, today it, it seems like everybody is irritated. You get up in the morning and you see what the latest argument is about. And it, it's not, you know, don't you want to be in peace? And joy and happiness and harmony. And, and we will be, I truly believe, we're, we're going to get there. But it takes this period, evidently, of really letting all of our stuff, everybody's stuff, come up. As someone said to me the other day, it's like every, it's, it's the time for all of us to get rid of all of our prejudices. Our prejudices uh, against each other, our prejudices about ourselves, all this stuff. And it's like spring house cleaning, isn't it? You know, it's kind of a mess when you're doing it. But when it's over, it's so beautiful. And I think that's what we're doing in consciousness as a country, <coughs> as a world. And we have the ability to do that. This book that uh, the Robert Brumet wrote is all about learning self-acceptance because um, a big part of that is clearing consciousness and being aware. There are exercises in this book about awareness and it will take patience, but I think it will be a wonderful journey for you, a beautiful journey, no matter where you are in your spiritual evolution. It's a, it's a good thing. You know, Charles Fillmore understood the subconscious. He was just 
uh, a genius, a spiritual genius at understanding how consciousness works. And he knew that we had to clear the subconscious of memories, thoughts, attitudes, things that didn't work in order to be clean and clear. And I just saw the other day, there's a, a movie that's coming out, and a video called Automatic Brain, The Magic of the Unconscious Mind. And it looks kind of good. You might want to check it out. Um, it's based on the belief that 90% of what we experience and what happens in our life is based on, comes from our subconscious. That's, you know, most of us are aware that there's a great deal. It's a great, it's the big influence, uh, a great influence in our life. But 90%, what do you think? Is that, does that sound right? It sounds like a lot to me. You know, we are, we're all learning to just allow, I think, to be more patient, to be more tolerant. Whoop. And this is a beautiful prayer, isn't it? It's a prayer that encourages us to do just what we're talking about this morning. Let's say it. God grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Ah. That's a wonderful prayer to visit every day. Maybe some of you do. Charles Fillmore, the founder of Unity, said in his book, Christian Healing, on page 24, he said, a most important part of the law of mind action is the fact of thought unity. It is absolutely necessary to understand the nature of this fact before one can demonstrate the power of the superconscious mind. Among our associates, we like and are attracted to those who understand and sympathize with our thoughts. In other words, it's sort of what he's saying is we like to be with like-minded people. He's, that's exactly what he's talking about. And then he goes on and says the same laws hold good in divine mind. In, its thoughts are drawn to and find expression in the minds of those who raise their thoughts and who raise themselves to that higher thought standard. This means that we must think of ourselves as God thinks of us in order to appreciate and to receive his thoughts and to bring forth the fruits. And so he says, if you think of yourself as anything less than the perfect child of the perfect parent, you lower the thought standard of your mind and cut off the influx of thought from divine mind. There's a big emphasis in, in psychology today about not being perfect. You know, everybody doesn't have to be perfect. Don't drive yourself nuts being perfect. And there's, there's a lot of truth there, but still the ideal is perfection because that's what you already are. That spiritual essence of you is perfect. And so the more we identify that aspect, the more we are able to bring it forth. He said that's what Jesus was talking about when he said, be therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And so that, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? In other words, the whole deal here is understanding that that perfection is here. There's nothing I can do to change that. It's here. It's here for good. It's here for eternity. What I can do to change it is to release everything that is not helpful in me. What about that? Just release it and let it go and see beyond it. And then the subconscious is clear. And what Charles is saying is superconsciousness can shine through you. You can get divine guidance. 
You can see a higher way. You can be more creative. You can be more loving. You can be more patient. Your beauty comes out in even more glory than before. I know you're already beautiful, just the way you are. Well, you know, this is a concern, as I said, about being absolutely perfect and right in our outer, outer form. This isn't about your outer form. It's all about what's going on inside yourself. It isn't about being right all the time. Darn. You know, I sort of enjoy that, don't you? Yeah. The Course in Miracles says, would you rather be right or happy? Okay, all right, I'd rather be happy. What about you? Yeah. And sooner or later, we kind of get that. And so, you know, this whole thing of cleaning and clearing and becoming aware, letting stuff come up. And the stuff we've got doesn't come up unless we give it space, unless we have quietness in consciousness, unless we dedicate ourselves to being aware. What am I thinking right now? Is this a really happy thought? Is this a helpful thought? Well, there's something there and it feels uncomfortable and I'm not happy with this. And so I'm just going to be quiet, I'm going to let it out, you know, and you just let your emotions come up. Oh, scary thought, right? Because we've been taught to be afraid of emotions, and emotions are great. Did you know that your emotions are your report card? Yeah, they tell us how we're doing, that's all. And emotions aren't bad, they're not good, they just are vehicles of energy to show us how we're doing with what's coming up in our life. Oh, I keep going the other way. And so growth can be a detoxifying process in which things need to come out, need to come up and looked at before they are released. I know you know that. You've been through that before, surely. And with this particular class, you get to do some more of it. But it doesn't mean that it's going to be an unhappy experience. It'll be a great experience because stuff that comes up can be released and go quickly and easily out the door. And so, you know, with awareness, what is so wonderful about awareness is that it gives us a choice. If I just think and act and emote automatically, there's no choice in that, is there? I'm just sort of running uh, around automatically, letting my, on autopilot, letting my subconscious say whatever, whatever the habitual thought or response is. And that's, that's not something I want. And so this isn't all about how you are so much as how you are within. Not so much as how you are in the outer world as how you are within. Being aware in the moment. And so the clearer I am about my internal self, the clearer I can be about what I want to do in the outer world and who I want to be and, and, and expressing myself the way I really want to instead of my conditioned desires. So many of the things we think we want or we have to do are from the conditioning that we've had, the programming we've had. You know, everybody that's conditioned us loves us. Our parents, um, our teachers, all those folks out there that are supposed to be experts, they love us and they want the best for us, but you know, they're not always right. Only that which is within you is right and knows your true wisdom. And so we, uh, we learn when we can make more choices and be more flexible with what we want, that we're happier and that our relationships go, uh, go better. When we can be flexible about our intentions and how we are with others and, and how they are with us instead of, you know, our conditioned uh, reflexes. You know, this, this 
it's like, you know, John came home one night, late from work. He didn't get home until, oh, I guess it was around 9 o'clock. And there was his wife, Mary. And Mary was so excited because this was their fifth wedding anniversary. And she'd taken the day off to stay home and cook dinner and make special recipes she'd never made before and get dressed up and have her hair done and have candles on the table and even flowers on a tablecloth. Everything just beautifully prepared for a wonderful night, evening with him. But he didn't show up at 6 o'clock when he normally did. And so she sat down and read the magazine and waited, and he didn't come up. He didn't show up at 8 o'clock. And the candles began to burn out, the flowers began to droop, and Mary began to droop too. Finally, he came in, John came in, and, uh, hello, honey, I'm home finally. What a day. It's been rough. Had to work late to get, you know, meet that deadline with the guys. And, but honey doesn't say a word back. <laughs> honey doesn't answer because honey is furious. And so you can imagine that there were a few little words, even though John tried to explain, well, you know, it was late when we got out of there, and then I went to, you know, have some milk with the boys at the pub. <laughs> well, that didn't help honey either. And so words were said that might not have been said, and words that maybe her mother said to her father at one point that she heard when she was a kid. All kinds of things happened that night on automatic because both parties became angry. And you know, anger is just being out of control, isn't it? That's, that's what anger is all about. It's being out of control and trying to get back in control again. And it's not helpful always. There's nothing wrong or bad about getting angry. Remember, your emotions are neutral. You can do whatever emotion you want to, but we need to see, is this helpful? Am I going to get what I want out of this? I don't think so. And so we have this opportunity to just really listen and learn from this great deep wisdom within us. There's a part of you that always knows what to say in every situation. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you doubt that? Yeah. But it's the truth. That wise aspect of you that is eternal, that is this eternal consciousness that flows behind everything you say, there is that aspect of you that watches and takes it in and knows. And when you plug into that part of you, that aspect, you know how to respond. This living, beautiful, perfect part of you is always there for you. It's always there for me. And it enables us, when we listen more, to be in touch with that aspect. The Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 39. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your cheek, your right cheek, turn the other to him also. And of course, this was Jesus' way of saying exactly what I've been sharing with you. When things don't go well, when people say things that hurt you, that disappoint you, that discourage you, turn the other cheek, well that means turn to the other side of your consciousness. Not the side that is angry and reacting, but the side that is patient, that will listen and come up with the wise way to respond in this situation. And so this is what living originally is all about. I just want to close by telling you the story 
about a lady, a real lady named Rachel Naomi Bremen. And she was living with um, um, a really difficult disease, Crohn's disease and other things. And she had a life that was filled with suffering, really, and limitation. And she was so jealous of her schoolmates because she couldn't do all the things they did. And one time when she was 15 years old, she was walking on the beach. And she realized that, you know, she just let all this anger and resentment come out and boil up in her. And she really got herself all bust up. And in the middle of this rage that she allowed, it was just her on the beach. Something shot through her. She realized that all this, this depth of feeling was really about her very strong core will to live, and live vitally, and love her life, and do exactly what she wanted. And it changed her completely. It changed her physically, it changed her emotionally and mentally. And she went on actually to become a doctor and an author and help thousands of people because she allowed this simmering emotion that had been there for so long to finally surface and come out. And once it got out of her, out of that subconscious nest, she became her true self. She allowed her beautiful, eternal aspect to come through, to come shining through. So I hope you enjoy this wonderful study you're about to do with Marge. And you know, one of my teachers always used to try to talk us all in to saying this affirmation frequently, daily even. Very simple affirmation of three words, which is, I like me. And the first time I did I went, this is a little weird. I like me. And then I began to see the point of that and appreciate it. Would you just say that with me? I like me. Mm. How was that? Kind of weird? Yeah. Let's say it again. I like me. Ooh. Now this time I want you to say it with a smile. Come on.
This is our time of meditation, and so I just encourage you to take a nice deep breath now through your heart as you close your eyes and give yourself this time of peace. And know with me that a beautiful new divine quality of beauty and peace and power is being birthed through you today and all your days <coughs> through your receptivity, through your awareness of yourself and all the wonderful people around the world. Holy Spirit, thank you for transmuting any fear or anxiety that has come up today in consciousness or this last week. We breathe in again through the heart and just sigh out and let go. We give our attention to opening to this larger dimension of ourself, of our, be of our being, of our ability to perceive the truth in us and other people. Begin to see ourselves from a level of graciousness and glorious well-beingness. Deep within me is everything that is perfect, ready to radiate through me and my world. I am willing to see myself differently, Holy Spirit. Speak to me, speak through me. I give thanks for my reality shifting to radiate with pure love at its core. Divine love.